Come out with us and play Love Your London Have a banana In today's episode of Love Your London, we will be visiting Dagenham Village, including a visit to the 15th century Cross Keys pub. Dagenham has had its fair share of tragedies over the years, whether it be the as yet unsolved murder of a young PC in the 1840s, the sad demise of its status as being a car manufacturing powerhouse employing 40,000 local inhabitants, or the tragic wildfires of last summer. But we start our journey at the Gorsby Brook Interchange on the lookout for Madonna's bras. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode. This is episode number six in our adventures around Barking and Dagenham. We're now firmly getting into Dagenham territory. This is the Dagenham dock area. Look at this, look at this in front of us. Isn't this amazing? This is this is part of the A13 Artscapes project. Um, there's two of them. Uh, as you can see on your screen, it's, it's two roundabouts. And it's one, one of the, when people are going down the A13, this is something that is, no, the people then know that they're, in, they're approaching Dagenham. Um, it's absolutely fabulous. There's one here, and there's an identical one on the other side of that flyover. Um, there's even a little door in there. I don't know if you can go inside, but... Um, I like it. It's fantastic, isn't it? What does it remind you of? The roofs of like old Ibero-Celtic houses. That is a far more intelligent answer than I was going to give. Uh, it reminds me and it reminds pretty much everyone around here of Madonna's bras. Oh, right. And okay. so that is the nickname of this, uh, of this uh, landmark, Madonna's bras. Not the official name. I'm sure you'll all remember in 1990, Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour, uh, when she wore these conical bras uh, designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier did not actually design them for her. They, originally, he designed them for his giant teddy bear, Nana. Um, but in the end, uh, Madonna wore them and it launched this, uh, this whole look that went into vogue and all this stuff like that. Local BMX enthusiasts call it the death spine. Um, it's a very stupid thing to do, uh, but there's even a video of some BMX youth being extremely irresponsible and driving up and down it on their bikes. Uh, there's a link in the description below. We don't want to really um, encourage that behaviour, but they've got almost 2 million views. I mean, how is that possible? Why have they got 2 million views? Why aren't we getting 2 million views? Well, that's probably because we talk about things like Ibero-Celtic roofs. <laughs> but, uh, but we're an educational channel, you oh, see. you say so. We're an educational channel. But anyway, so there you go. Um, I'm, I, the link is in the description below if you want to see some young people being really foolish. Um, like, we sound really old now, don't we? These amazing structures uh, were designed by the Thomas Heatherwick Studio. One is called Scylla and the other one is called Charybdis which were two monsters from Greek mythology that supposedly inhabited the Straits of Messina. As I said, some people love them, a lot of people hate them, but they're here to stay. No one really calls them Scylla and Charybdis. They're Madonna's bras to everyone, unless you're into BMX, in which case it's a death spine. Personally, I'm with Madonna. Okay, so we are here at Dagenham Dock British Rail Station. There's been a station here since 1908. We're in zone five. Um, uh, there's step free access if you're heading towards Grays. Not so much if you're heading towards London. Um, so it's all like semi step free access. But as you'll see inside, there's a lot of uh, you know, there's hearing loops. Uh, there's um, assisted. Uh, they, they assist you in, in getting to Grays at least. It's a little bit more complicated if you're on this side. Uh, I mean, there is a, there is a lift here, but it's, if you wanted to go to the other side towards London, it's not so easy. And this may one day be, if plans go ahead, uh, on the DLR, the Docklands Light Railway. Uh, it's been discussed, it's in, there are plans to maybe extend the DLR uh, up to here. Um, why? Because we're in the middle of nowhere. Well, I'll tell you why now. That is the Eddie Stobart Depot. Uh, Eddie Stobart, I'm sure you've seen that name emblazoned on, on trucks heading uh, towards the Channel Tunnel and beyond. Uh, big, huge logistics company, that's their depot. Um, and uh, what this uh, station had was it had a direct link between Dagenham Dock and Valencia. Uh, El Musafis in Valencia, to be, to be exact. Um, it was a special link uh, that was created initially because this, is, this was the land of Ford. 
Uh, this is where the big huge Ford factory was just over there. Uh, when it opened in 1931 it was absolutely huge and the vehicles were assembled here right up until 2002. Almost 11 million cars were manufactured here on the assembly lines. Um, and um, of course there's a huge uh, Ford factory in Al Musafes in Valencia. Um, uh, so much so that a lot of the business slowly started leaving this area and moving to Valencia. Um, and. Um, that's, that was really the downhill, downhill of, um, of Ford here in Dagenham. Uh, now it's about 2,000 or so just making engines, uh, but they needed the trains to move parts backwards and forwards between um, uh, Al Musafis and, and Dagenham. So there's this special line which was the longest rail journey in Europe by single operator. Um, now, uh, once a week, using the Euro Tunnel along the way, of course, it's now used mainly uh, to transport products, produce, vegetables, oranges, etc., from Valencia to Tesco's um, and places like that. Uh, it, was, it's like the, the, it started off as a once a week operation run by Eddie Stobart themselves. That's 1,800 kilometres of track, that's uh, 1,100 miles to be exact. Some of the, um, some of the uh, of the compartments were specially refrigerated um, and on the way back to Valencia they'd bring back industrial pallets made by the Australian company CHEP Commonwealth Handling Equipment Pool and I'm sure you've seen the famous blue pallets um, uh, that, uh, that uh, had the, the, num the name CHEP, C-H-E-P, uh, CHEP never sells, emblazoned on it. Uh, so you can see over here behind us, uh, over here you can see some pallets there, I don't know if they are CHEP ones. The blue ones, right? the yes, the blue one, those blue ones over there, they're probably CHEP pallets. Uh, it's an Australian company. As far as I can work out, Eddie Stobart stopped sort of like running this uh, Valencia Dagenham service and it's now run by a company called Transfessa and they do 15 journeys a week um, between Valencia and Dagenham. Um, I I'm always quite surprised that Dagenham is not twinned with Al Musafes, uh, seeing that there is such a strong connection between the two areas. Um, but. Um, at Dagenham, if you're interested, or Barking in Dagenham, is actually twinned with Trove, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, T-C-H-E-W, in uh, Poland, and uh, Witten in Germany. So those are the places that Mark and Dagenham are twinned with. Um, but as I said, it's very sad, uh, end of an era, Ford. I mean, I'm sure that people who used to come in, especially on the river, uh, towards, up the Thames, towards, um, towards Barking and Dagenham, would see the big huge Ford factory um, with its massive big neon sign saying Ford. Uh, the largest neon sign in Europe if not the world. Uh, so what's going to be happening to this whole development? Well there's going to be 3,500 homes are going to be built here so this station is going to become very busy. Maybe not luxury flats. Uh, no, they're going to be. I believe they're going to be quite affordable. If that's, uh, I know that that's a word that they throw around. Uh, often they tend not to be that affordable, but I think they are going to try and keep these quite affordable. Um, I did want to point out over there. You can see that big wind turbine over there. There's three of them. Uh, they they are sort of like bang in the middle of where the old factory was. Um, this was the first wind farm in London, and as I said, there were three of these turbines in total. The third one was installed just to power the engine manufacturing um, of Ford. It's 85 metres high to the hub and 120 metres if you go to the top of the rotors and the diameter is 70 metres, so there you go. So um, if you're interested in the whole Ford story, um, there's a really good film. Uh, it's called Made in Dagenham. It stars Bob Hoskins and Sally Hawkins um, and it's about the strike that the uh, ladies who are working in the sewing um, factory for Ford, uh, they went on strike in 1968 because they were frustrated at the fact that there was no equal pay for women. Uh, they went on strike and the film is a very good feel-good film about that whole, uh, that whole, whole moment in time where uh, it was thanks to that, I mean Barbara Castle got involved, it was thanks to that that we got the Equal Pay Act of 1970. Um, and of course it had a theme song and guess who wrote the theme song? Billy Bragg! Yeah, absolutely, Billy Bragg. Of course we can't go an episode really without mentioning the lovely Billy Bragg, can we? Um, actually I'm not sure if we mentioned him in the last episode but there you go. We've mentioned him so far 
in five of our six episodes on Barking and Dagenham. Billy Bragg uh, wrote the theme song, theme tune. Uh, it was sung by another famous uh, Dagenham um, star, Sandy Shaw. Now, Sandy Shaw uh, was the very first person to win the Eurovision Song Contest for the United Kingdom. We're going to be checking out her house in the next episode, so do subscribe because otherwise you'll miss it. It's coming quite soon, but do subscribe so you'll be amongst the first to hear it. Just subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and that way you get the reminder. Share and like and all that. Uh, you know, you know what to do now. What if Mrs. Castle says no deal? How will you cope then? Cope with women. Now don't ask such stupid questions. That lake that you can see, that's Dagenham Breach. Um, and uh, it's quite interesting. It all happened thanks to an exceptional high tide back in October 1707. 14 feet of the Thames embankment were swept away and 5,000 acres of land was inundated. Um, and um, what's really interesting is that a lot of the marsh clay that was on top was swept away. Um, and uh, it uncovered uh, some... Uh, it, uh, it uncovered a peat that was underneath and that showed a subterranean forest of trees and loads and loads of ancient mammal remains. There was one tree trunk which was 50 foot long. Now of course people back then had absolutely no idea of the ice age and they, had, they couldn't understand how there was a forest, uh, under, a subterranean forest underneath all of that. Um, but obviously now we know exactly uh, what caused it, it was the ice age. Uh, these were the remains of trees that were here and were killed by the rising of the sea level and were then buried under underneath the clay. So it's absolutely fascinating. Anyhow, it took them about 13 years for them to fix the breach. Quite a long time, but it was a huge, remarkable achievement considering the power of the Thames. Um, and uh, this little area, this Dagenham breach, uh, remained. And it remains to this day probably still full of the same molecules that um, uh, went into it back in the 1700s. See, we're an educational channel. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Up until very recently, there used to be uh, something there called the Ford Heritage Centre. Um, it's still listed on Google as a museum and it says it's closed today at 6.30. But I know for a fact that it's not open. It hasn't been open for ages. And in fact, even if it was open, you weren't allowed to just turn up. It was by invitation only. But they had loads and loads and loads of old Ford cars that were available to look at for enthusiasts. They've now been moved to Daventry, I believe. Uh, the last ones uh, left uh, sometime in the summer of last year. Um, but yes. Uh, that's where it used to be, the Ford Heritage Centre. As you can see on your screen, still says it's there as a museum. It's not. Don't listen to Google. They're not really good at updating their website, or the people aren't very good at updating Google. Whichever it is, don't rely on them anymore. And here we have Vida and Sons with the Lithuanian flag next to it. Well, it's not the flag, it's the uh, outline of the country with LT in the middle. Uh, this is a, uh, in the last episode we had a nice little um, treat. Um, we went to a Romanian shop. Uh, you uh, won't have seen that in, the, in that episode, but you'll see it in our Romania special. Um, and um, as you can see, uh, we have here Lithuanian flag, UK flag, Polish flag, Latvian flag, Ukrainian flag and Romanian flag and there's a bit of a blank in the middle. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Could it be the Russian flag? Probably. Um, anyway, this is the Vida and Sons shop pub uh, just down there. Uh, it's called the Ship and Shovel um, and it's uh, now actually a nightclub. The Ship and Shovel, for the, for, mainly for the Lithuanian diaspora living here. Lots of other Eastern European and Northern European um, ex-Soviet states, uh, people, people go there. Um, it's not open during the daytime, it's only open at night, open till very late. No point in trying there now because it'll be closed and even if we did go we haven't got ID on us because I believe they, they check you for ID when you go in. Uh, that's mainly because it, does, it, it has had quite a bit of trouble in the past. Uh, so now they check your ID as you go in to make sure that you're not one of the local Gopniks. Um, so there you go. Okay, so we are currently on Ballard's Lane, uh, going through the old Dagenham Park. There's the old Dagenham Park over there to my left. And over this, over here, this area is called the Lees. This is the the Ballard's Lane car park. Um, now, as you look over there, see some of the bushes are quite red. 
and the tree over there is quite red. Now that is not the colour of autumn I'm afraid. That there is the remains of a horrific fire that happened um, last uh, July, um, July 2022. There was a massive fire that swept across this whole area. Um, it was, a, it was the biggest heat wave in London. Uh, it, was a, it was the hottest day ever recorded in the history of the British Isles. Um, it, it, the, the, the thermometer soared above 40 degrees centigrade. 41? Yes, but on that day, 40 degrees. Right. Um, and, um, and so this became uh, an inferno. Um, the, 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 all the trees were on fire. Altogether, 41 houses were completely destroyed. Uh, over there, over there, you've got Beam Park. Beam Park is completely destroyed. Obviously, it's, it's nature always finds a way. It's coming back. Uh, so many houses were destroyed. Uh, so many livelihoods were lost. So many cars were destroyed. I mean, just look at these pictures now on your screen. It looks like something from Mariupol, doesn't it? Uh, when you saw it on the news, um, it was just quite unbelievable. This was Dagenham. Um, these burnt out cars and and the shells of houses. Uh, in fact, just over here, we might be able to see some of the houses that remain, or what's left of them. Uh, we're going to just head towards Farm Close, which was extremely badly hit. Um, the houses there, is not very much left of them at all. In the air, you can smell the burning. Uh, it's quite clear, and it's like three and a half months later on, still heavy in the air. Uh, but let's go now just check out see what's left of these houses i mean if you just look over here you can see the back of them um, i mean just look at this i mean this was this is absolutely horrific look at this Jeez. that looks like a vintage truck i mean yeah Aren't they? well they look vintage i suppose they yeah. might not be let's have a walk down here let me just um just look through the Okay, you can really, you can smell it in the air. It's really, really quite strong. As you can see, this house almost got. Um, uh, they're very lucky they, they didn't lose their house. That was have been next. Um, it's just. And there's lots of houses like this. I mean, some of the houses have only got minor damage, like that one over there. But this was full of burnt-out cars originally. Later on in this episode, we bump into Gary Edwards, a resident of Farm Close, who was rescued by the firefighters. We will be showing our full chat with him when we get to the Cross Keys pub in a few minutes' time. However, now would be a great time to share with you some shocking footage that was taken by one of the firefighters and which was given to us by Gary and for which we have received permission to use. Look at these houses. All oh, these raw houses. Gone. All gone. <laughs> mate. Cars, houses. Houses. That was the first houses we got to when we was here. Look at this place. Me. Whole little estates burnt down here. <clears throat> Unbelievable, wasn't it? It's like a fucking war zone. That house there, the disabled geezer, without getting out. You've got that just inside. And it's probably still going around here. Yeah? Yeah. They just Jesus. This is unbelievable. Just in here alone, I reckon. Not 30, 20, 30 houses? Fucking hell. 
<coughs> Never seen nothing like this. Okay, at this moment in time, we are not yet able to monetize our videos as we still need to reach more views. But once we do, and as a thank you for being able to use the footage that we have just shared with you, we will endeavor to give any proceeds that this entire video makes to the Firefighters Memorial Trust, which looks after memorials to fallen firefighters on a national level, as well as supporting research to improve firefighting safety and those injured in the cause of their duties. Amazingly, there was not a single fatality that occurred in this inferno, but 16 firefighters were injured and two of them needed hospitalization. Again, not a single penny that this video makes via advertising in perpetuity will go to us, but instead will go to this charity. And that is a Love Your London promise. So, please share this video with as many people as possible and make this happen. In fact, the fire uh, even leapt over the road here. Uh, as you can see, burnt bushes on this side as well. Um, a couple of trees there which are a bit charred. Yeah, awful. Um, and 41 houses in all, completely destroyed. Not all of them here, of course, but across uh, during, that, during that awful day. I mean, here we've got some trees. Oh, and that emergency alert you may have received on your mobile phone during a test last month was set up to address localised emergencies just like this one. So if you do have a smartphone, are living in an area susceptible to wildfires and are living within a 4G or 5G reception area and, unlike me, is not a free mobile customer, may consider leaving their phone switched on while sleeping to prevent potential tragedy caused by a wildfire or similar situation. You can see there the grass that was on fire. And here we have the river, the lovely little once stream. Um, unfortunately, not enough water there to really assist the fire brigade in putting it out. It was the, it was the um, worst, um, the worst that the London Fire Brigade had had to deal with uh, in their history since World War II. Uh, they hadn't uh, been so busy since the Second World War. Uh, but there we go, there's the Want stream bubbling away. Very peaceful. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, we've got some CDs down there. There you go. Phil Collins. Phil Collins, yeah. Mariah Carey. No, not my not my style really. Shame they've dumped it here in the river, though, isn't it? Yeah. Not very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next place. All right. Yeah, as you as you can see now, there on your screen, the fire actually. Um, even though you'd have thought that um, Ballard's Road would have been a natural fire break, it crossed over the road and burnt these houses as well on the other side. Absolutely tragic. Wow, look at that mushroom. It's amazing, the size of that mushroom. Look, with Sharon's hand next to it. Anyway, let's, um, let's now go on here because you can see here some, whoa. If you can see here, this is, this is Church Lane, where, uh, which gives you a good clue as to what is around the corner from here. It's a church. It's a church of St. Peter and St. Paul. Uh, but everyone knows it as Dagenham Parish Church. And the church has been here since the 13th century. It has been rebuilt quite a few times since. Um, it is Grade 2 listed. Uh, but what you can actually see now dates from roughly the 19th century. So not that old, but there has been a church in that place uh, for a very, very long time. Here we go, Dagenham Village. There is one particular memorial that we're keen to show you in this place. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to find it. Should be able to find it. Here it is, George Clark. Oh, oh, oh that? Yeah. Okay, it's not that big. No. One. So here we go, this is to the memory of George Clark. Um, police constable, this is one of the big unsolved murders, uh, along with um, Jack the Ripper and stuff like that. This really sort of intrigued the nation at the time. Uh, still no one knows exactly what happened. 
1846, in a cornfield, which is now the car park of Barking and Dagenham College, a 20-year-old Bobby called PC George Clark was murdered. And he came up here from Stepney to replace the void left by three police officers who had been sacked for going on a drunken rampage around Dagenham Village, which is where we are now. Uh, so no one knows exactly who did it. Um, but uh, perhaps he discovered, while on his beat, that a gang was stealing corn. Or perhaps it was the other policemen that killed him, the ones that, whose jobs uh, he had taken. Perhaps it was a sort of like a grudge thing. Or perhaps it was just sort of like other policemen who weren't too happy about this 20-year-old squeaky clean guy, very religious guy, coming here and, um, and being sort of very, uh, trying to clean up the area, clean up the uh, corruption in the police force and everything. There's a lot of possibilities of who did it, but no one knows for sure. So it's one of those big unsolved mysteries. Uh, so this tribute was erected by the inhabitants of the parish and his brother officers of the K Division of the Metropolitan Police. Talking of drunken rampages, there is an amazing, lovely little village pub just literally across the road from uh, this beautiful church. And I think we need to have a little mini drunken rampage of our own, shall we? It's beer o'clock. It's definitely the sun is beginning to set and this episode is beginning to come towards an end. We've still got a couple of more things to show you before you go. But let's just go and have a little, a little swift drink in the beautiful Cross Keys. Now, yeah. Cross, Cross Keys is an old pub. It's a grade two listed pub, as it should be. Timber framed, dates back to the 15th century when it was a tanner's dwelling. Uh, but it became a pub in the early 1700s during the time of Queen Anne. And that's when it became known as the Queen's Head in her honour. But by 1785, it was already called the Cross Keys. Let's go and have a drink. I mean, look at this, look how village greeny this is. I mean, this, isn't, this doesn't feel like London at all, with a little, little memorial in the middle and a little grass thing. Very nice. It's lovely. Yeah. Wow, that's, a that's a lovely pub to work in. What's your name? Brooke. 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 Yeah. Lovely. Um, and, and so like, you, you, it's just like a family pub? Or oh, it's so homely. So homely. Best pub. Best pub in Dagenham. Best pub. What, what, what time, what sort of clientele do you get here? Is it just like locals? Do you get like a music crowd as well? Or? Yeah, on a Friday night we sometimes have a bit of karaoke. Then on a Saturday night sometimes a bit of DJ music. Yeah. Like we have a couple, we have parties in the hall. Okay. But yeah, it's all that Fantastic. Did I go through? No. no. Sorry. That's all right. That's not too bad, £7.20 for, for two. 360 a pint. 360 a pint. Well, that's actually really, for, for a lovely pub like this, that's a really nice yeah, price. It's such a homely pub, it's like a big family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a lot. Every Saturday. And it's a really old pub, 1500s. Well, it was a pub yeah. since the 1700s, yeah. but it's been, the building's been here since the 1500s. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Lovely talking to you. Oh, this is, look at this. This is a lovely old pub, isn't it? Look at this. Look at this beer garden as well. So I'm here with Gary and he's a local resident and he was his house was very close to the fire, is that right? My my house got damaged. He got damaged. Yeah, I was in farm close. Oh you'd farm oh we've just been to farm I was close. In farm close, yeah. You'll actually see it on the video because we walked down the farm oh, close. Yeah. You, so yeah. you were the one of the houses on the left I'm hand the side? No, I'm the second one on the right as you go in. Oh, so I the see. One yeah, that, yes. That they're right next to the, the, the penultimate house before the ones that are burnt around the key. Yeah, yeah the, the ones two behind uh, behind my house. And yeah, it came down and it and it burnt all the side of my house. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We, we saw it. We, we saw yeah, it. Yeah, and the kitchen. Yeah, it's all we on saw front room and wind, yeah. all the windows and it all melted. You, it wasn't your one. Well, mine yeah. ain't melted because I had mine rendered. Oh, okay. So that wasn't one of that. No, nah, but all the windows are burnt and everything. Okay. But and is it? Is, and what was, how did it take a long time for the smell to go? I mean, you can still sort of well, smell it. Still smell it now. I can't, I'm not living there because I've had to rent somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. That's awful. Did, did you? I mean, I mean, uh, we, and you were there at the time trying to put it out? Or? No, well, I couldn't put it out. No, no. I, I just got out of the shower. Yeah. I was right. in the garden originally, yeah. and I don't know if it was a, um, a, like a delivery driver or whatever, and. He said to me, I'm just giving you the heads up, mate. There's a, a, a massive fire in a, right at the other end of the field, yeah. at the bottom of Ballard's. And he said, um, and it's raging towards them two houses behind you. Yeah. So I thought I'd fire going to put that out. So I went in, I quickly cut me out, I had a shower. I just got out of the shower, just put a pair of shorts and that on, and the police 
we were banging on my door and evacuated me. Yeah. And it was fire was already in the garden behind me by that time. Oh my god! Within gosh. minutes. How horrible. And, and, and I mean, it started. I mean, obviously, it was the hottest day on record. Um, yep. uh, do, do you know how it started? Was it? Well, we, we don't know. I mean, <coughs> it started right at the other end of the field, obviously, and it came back. But we don't know what actually started it. I mean, you do get kids who nick motorbikes and set light them over that field and that. That's uh, Bean Park, you know, that bit of that area. Yeah, yeah, which the old, yeah, yeah, the park with all the football pitches and that. So it yeah. started right at the other end of that, and it just spread. Yeah. And then you obviously got that house next door where you had a garage, and then all the fire, all the um, gas cylinders were firing over the road and everything. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it, spread, it spread over the other side of the road, didn't it? That was yeah, the, that gas that cylinders was... were going over. Wow. Because a neighbour of mine said one went over over the Ballard's Road, over the house opposite her, and it obliterated someone's back garden. Oh, my gosh. No. So, Anyway, thank goodness your house is not destroyed. And you'll be able it's to not, move. but it's the insurance company. They're so, I'm underinsured, but they're, I'm having so much aggravation with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't very pleasant, especially being disabled and whatnot. Yeah. You don't get a lot of help off them. Oh, well, I, hope, um, I hope things turn up for the better. Well, hopefully. It won't be before Christmas by the look of yeah. it. But, okay. But, um, yeah, it's not been a very nice... Been a bit, I mean... At least I got because that my son died. That we, we had a son died years ago, and at least we had all the pictures of him. Yeah, we all got out. We got out as personal. Other people lost everything, unfortunately. You know what yeah. I mean? But it's totally destroyed. It's only four houses that's going to be standing there. Yeah, out of fourteen. Oh god, forty uh, houses. For, yeah, forty houses destroyed. Fourteen houses. So For, fourteen. Ten, four there's fourteen all together there, but ten of them have got. A, well, eight. Well, eight of them are absolutely just. Yeah. A frame, so they're probably going to knock the other two. There's only be four out of 14 remaining. Four out of, four out of 14, and there were 41 houses all together in the capital. Yeah, they? but we're farm closest, there's farm only close. 14. Only 14. But there's only four that, uh, original ones that are can standing, stand. going to be standing. But yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, all, right. all the best, all the best, and hopefully it'll all get better in the new all year. Right, new year, new beginning. Yeah, so that was Gary, a local resident. Um, absolutely um, uh, shocking story, but there you go. Um, it's really amazing that no one lost their lives. Uh, 16 firefighters got injured, two of them very severely needed hospitalisation, but fortunately uh, no members of the public um, got uh, severely injured and um, nobody died. So I suppose that's a silver lining, but also very, very tragic for all the people who lost their livelihood hoods, lost their homes, lost their cars. Um, anyway, we're going to finish off our drinks here at the Cross Keys and see what else there is to see between here and Dagenham Heathway. Okay, so you know the, you know the expression wild chase, going on a wild goose chase. This is probably one of them. Um, now, this, I have been saying repeatedly during the series that Google Maps these days isn't really be, to be trusted. Things say that they're open, that they haven't, they've been closed for years. Um, now, there's something on Google Maps. I have no idea what it is, but it's listed as Ahmed's tourist attraction. Um, now, it's meant to be down here somewhere. Um, it's got two five-star reviews, but I I don't know what it is. So I, I'm I'm curious to find out what it is. Why is it? I mean, this is meant to be down here somewhere. There's even photos of it, photos of this hedge, but yet. Yeah, I don't know. Let's have, let's have a look down here. I don't know if it's someone being someone putting a joke and sticking it on, sticking it, stick it on there, or whether in fact there is a tourist attraction here. I, I asked online on a, on a Facebook group um, what on earth uh, that was and. Someone wound me up. Uh, it was quite funny because I actually did fall for it in the end. Uh, someone did wind me up and said that it was a, a sanctuary for escaped wild African snails that had escaped from, from a butcher up the road. Um, and someone had put them there um, and uh, a place where people could feed them and stuff. And I actually, I actually believed it for a while, so it's a bit, uh, a bit naive of me. But um, yeah, they were just having a laugh. Uh, they didn't know what it was either. But um, it's meant to be over there in those hedges. So let's try and see if we can go down there. I think it's public access. It's, I think it's in these hedges here. It's fine. This is this is public land. Sure. Yes. Hey, let's go in there. That looks really this is it here. Oh, hang on. There is something in here. Let's have a look. And it's pitch black. Here we go. Get, get, have, have it. Why don't you, you're go smaller. Yeah, you go first. Very dangerous. Here we go. Well, 
We're not entirely sure what it is, but there is something here. Boy, you sure know how to show a lady a good time. Oh, what is it? We have tape tied to these trees. We have these sort of makeshift hammocks that have fallen down. I don't know what it is. You got some playing cards on the on the on the, uh, the uh, down there. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's. I suppose anything is a tourist attraction, isn't it? Really. I'm not sure. Well, I'm glad I came down here. That was not a wasted journey after all, was it? There was a. Not at all. Not at all. Interesting. I don't know what it was, but maybe maybe if you know what it was in the comments, I'm fascinated to know what exactly that was. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, let's go now towards Dagenham Heathway, the last stop on today's episode, where we're going to be talking very briefly about the station. So we end the episode here at this station, Dagenham Heathway. It's also in Fair Zone 5 and it's on the district line. And it's a very similar layout to Upney that we saw a couple of episodes ago with this sort of like ramp going all the way down, which means that it is accessible. <laughs> and it has toilets. And they're accessible too. Look, there's an accessible toilet right there. Um, uh, unfortunately, the toilets aren't always open. Um, I mean, I, I suppose these ones are because if you've got the special key, you can get in. But uh, these toilets are closed until further notice due to criminal misuse and vandalism unfortunately uh, there you go not everything in Dagenham is great is it uh, as you can see it really is in need of some desperate love and attention the roof here looks like it's going to cave in at any moment in fact um, online there's quite a few people worried about it um, so so is anyone listening it's also quite a busy station um, twice the amount of people use this station than use Dagenham East. Uh, yet Dagenham, e Dagenham East is in a much better state of repair. We'll be seeing Dagenham East in the next episode. Uh, we'll be seeing a lot about Dagenham East and, and also from there we'll be doing a nice big circle all the way around Let East Brook End and the chase um, and then working our way back down towards uh, the, f the new film studios that they're building. So all that to look forward to. That will be our last episode. That will be the seventh episode on Barking and Dagenham, the third on Dagenham itself. Um, but um, we'll see you in the next episode and we're going to show you always to try and show you the nice side of Dagenham, uh, not the nasty side. So it's goodbye from us from Dagenham Heath. Till next time, bye. bye! Next time on Love Your London, we'll be checking out Dagenham East, home to Sandy Shore, the Beam Valley Country Park and the Chase Nature Reserve, Dagenham and Redbridge FC and, very soon, the epicentre of an exciting new film studio complex that could turn Dagenham into the next Hollywood. Till next time. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love your London. Have a banana.